Next, on 58 Minutes, we evaluate the situation on Earth, the solutions, and the people's opinions. Welcome back to 58 Minutes. As you probably know, the situation on Earth has gotten worse every day. Ever since the billionaire, Joshua Fitchett, made the announcement that an asteroid was going to hit Earth and kill every living thing on it, all hell has broken loose. Big cities such as Chicago, London, and New York were abandoned. People left their homes in fear of the gangs that took charge of those cities. Violence and famine have become a common problem all around the world. Crime rates have raised exponentially. Being outside after dark is practically considered suicide, as most killings occur during the night. These days, people no longer live in houses. They inhabit destroyed buildings, abandoned cars, or find shelters on the streets. Those streets have become dumps and habitats for many animals, such as dogs, rats, etc. Now, people all over the world have different ways of coping with this knowledge. Some turn to religion, others to violence, and some just try to enjoy their last few years on Earth. However, these two men have decided to try and solve the problem. Our reporter, Alison Sakan, had the chance to meet them both and see their facilities. First of all, here is the IARI's facility in the Alps in Switzerland. So as you can see, we're right outside the IARI facility. There's a lot of security. We're about to go in. This facility was founded 16 years ago, and each and every year, new mathematicians or scientists are introduced to the program. The IARI's goal is to send rockets up into space and destroy the asteroid, therefore saving the Earth from a collision that would have destroyed everything on it. We have uh, 14 rockets. They are all being launched from different countries. For example, we have one in Pakistan, we have one in um, the United States. And um, what about the riots? You know, there are those people against your project. How do you take care of those? Do you have any special bodyguards or special, you know, security guards that take care of those? Yeah, we are aware that there are riots outside of our facility. Um, for security, as you said, you know, we have bodyguards. Uh, we have a great team, so. They're outside of the facility taking care. We try to minimize the loss of life, but sometimes it is necessary. Also, the scientists that are inside are recommended to stay inside. Uh, they only go outside for very, very special reasons. So, for example, I haven't gone uh, outside of this place in a, about a year. Thank you very much for this interview, Mr. Shepard. My pleasure. Now, after a long day in Switzerland, it was time to head for Idaho to see Mr. Fitchett and his facility. Alright, right now we're in Mr. Fitchett's facility and we're about to meet him and one of the kids that he chose. Hello Mr. Fitchett, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, it's very nice meeting you too. So, um, what do you do in this facility? We keep uh, teenagers from the age of uh, 10 to 16 years old and they are all specialized in a very specific subject. So it could be, you know, it could be French, it could be uh, mechanical engineering, it really depends. And why do you do this? If the asteroid hits Earth, which it probably will, um, we can ensure the survival of our kind and, uh, you know, all of our knowledge pretty much because if each and every teenager in this facility is you know, specialized in one subject, then they will know everything about that subject and we will keep the knowledge over the years. So you don't only keep humans, do you? You keep animals too? Yeah, we do have animals in this facility. We have 50 breeding pairs of each and every animal. We also have many kinds of plants, trees, etc. And uh, how does this facility work? What's in this facility? Yeah, so in this facility we have two floors. We have this floor, which is the main floor, and we have one that is uh, a lot deeper. And uh, that's where we will go when the asteroid hits Earth. Many people do not agree with Mr. Fitchett's plan, even though it guarantees the survival of the humankind. His plan involves the deaths of 9 billion people. Hello, Billy. How are you? It's nice to meet you, too. Great. So, um, what do you think about this facility? You know, what, How do you like it here? 
Well, you know, I used to kind of hate the idea of this, but after a couple of, you know, weeks, I got to know the people, and uh, it turns out it's pretty great. I, I mean, I like the idea. Alright, and um, what's your role here? What do you do? Yeah, my role in this facility, uh, I'm the leader, uh, so that means that I'm in charge of everything. Oh, I kind of like it, you know, I get to know a bunch of different kids. Um, at first it kind of scared me, they're kind of like robots, but now that I got to know them, it's pretty great. Okay, thank you very much, Billy. Yeah, thank you. Now, people have many different opinions about those facilities. Some like them, some don't. You can see proof of those opinions all around the city. Whether it be graffiti, signs, anything, they are everywhere. even take it as far as to making movies or songs. For example, this artist named Jenny Dukes made a song about the situation. You got a chance to meet him and ask a couple of questions on the streets of New York. No, no time for interviews. Why, why no, did I you do no the time. song? Why did no you do time. the time? Oh, end of days, because this is a very important subject and stuff, you know, with the end of the world. And, yeah, that's all I have are to you, say. Are you for the IARI? No comment, no comment. Very interesting. Now, no matter what opinion you have, we still don't know what is going to happen in a couple of months. We can hope for the best, but there is no way to know in advance. Please tell us about your opinion. You can send us an email at this address. This was 58 Minutes. I'm Todd Smith. See you next week.